Hey, hi everyone, this is Vivek and welcome to the second episode of AdCoder Weekly. So today we're going to talk about this problem at, from AdCoder regular contest 134 and the problem's name is majority, the majority. And it's a really cool problem. It's related to a very cool uh, way to actually ensure majority in a lot of boxes. And this particular problem is something which is like kind of tricky when you see it on the first glance and it might be something that you might go in the wrong direction. So the line of thought is very important in this problem. So as per our like setup for every episode, we're going to talk about the reading observations and solving part and the formulation and make sure that you comment on what you are the things that you exactly learned because it seems very simple. Why should we go about and comment in the comment description? But believe me, if you comment something and you type it, you're going to remember it for a very, very long time. Okay. So without any delay, let's just get into the problem and the problem essentially says that there are k boxes like number from 1 to k and initially all boxes are empty and there are some balls uh, with integer from 1 to and written on them and then every ball of type i has ai frequency right uh, balls with the same integer written on them cannot be distinguished and snook has decided that uh, he will put all of his balls in this box so that's important uh, he wants the ball with number one to be a majority in every box in other words, the box one should be greater than another box. Yeah. So one should be the majority element in every block, right? Find the number of such ways to put in the box modulo nine and eight. So it's, it's a prime number, a very common prime number used for fifties in general, but can also be used as normal prime number. Two ways are distinguished. If like at least in one of the boxes, there is a different number of ba like balls of type J, right? Yeah, that makes sense. So we have to distribute the things and we have to make sure that the Every box has a majority element one in that. Okay. And a uh, number of items is 10 to the power five frequencies are very, very high and K is up to 200. So there are 200 boxes that makes some part of it uh, simpler. Let's try to see some example. Two, two, three, one. One will be majority. Yep, makes sense. There are two exactly two ways because we have three ones, so we can place one. So one of the boxes can be containing one one, and the other one will contain two and one. So which one is that? You just choose that. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, so I think I have understood the question correctly. That makes sense. So let's let's quickly understand uh, how we can kind of approach this particular problem, and when we go about, uh, let's say, doing this. Let's see. So first of all, we talked about the reading part. So reading part is done. Next, we're going to move into the standard observation and formula uh, observation and solving part, right? So, and then we're going to move to formulate. So how do we think about majority elements? So this is a very interesting line of thoughts that is used for almost all majority elements, even for some median based problems. If you have seen the previous ad coder video, you might have guessed the way we discussed the median, right? Median is a very way to very much similar to finding out majority element because if the median and the first element is same, it's almost like saying that all of that element in that range is exactly the same element. So we can say that fine. Uh, the formulation is going to be uh, the way of keeping a plus one or minus one for every element and then making sure that the sum is greater than or equal to zero is a way to kind of make is greater than zero is a way to say that, okay, Let's say the element X is what we want to be as a majority element, right? So again, if we make sure that you have checked the first video, it's a very, very interesting first video of the AdCoder series. It's a very, very interesting problem. And in that we discussed that there is this idea that, okay, if I say that for every item like that, let's say there is a block and there are some items that we are putting in. If we put in a X, we do a plus one to the box, right? If we put something else other than X, we do a minus one to the box. And finally, the sum is greater than zero, which means that one is a X is the majority element, right? So this is the way we think about problems that whenever you put a X, it's like a doing a plus one. And if you put something else, it's doing a minus one, right? And the sum has to be greater than zero. So that X is strictly major in the groups. And there are K such boxes, right? So let's try to simply like quickly before going into like one of the ways I personally feel that this is a very nice way to not restrict yourself to one thought of lines because sometimes in contest what happens is we just make start thinking about DP and we just keep thinking okay, how will we keep states in that maybe it's a problem of something else right so we quickly list down the topics that it can be brute force like AI is up to 10 to the power 5 and uh, like 
I think n and a a a is up to uh, mod and n is up to n power five. So brute is obviously not possible. If we think about greedy, we have to count the number of ways. So counting problems are not generally a greedy problem. Okay, it's uh, it's mostly optimization problems which are which goes into greedy problems. So problems are of two types, right? Optimization and counting. Counting is not a greedy problem. Next, we have binary search. So binary search is also for optimization in general. It's not really counting except you are counting subarrays. So uh, like binary search is not also going to fit in this particular realm. So one thing that can be there is n is up to 10 to the power 5 and k is up to 200, right? So it, this kind of suggests a very nice way to maybe formulate it in a DP, right? This can be a DP kind of formulation or it's obviously like a math setup, right? You have k boxes and all. So one is DP. Next is obviously a maths option, right? Graph doesn't seem to be a lens to think about this. Anything else doesn't really make much more sense. So these are the two options that we have for this problem, right? So immediately you uh, have now a clean thought process that, okay, I am not going to think about other things. DP and maths is the one thing that we're going to have. Okay. So in general, you can think about DP, but in this particular problem, when we have DP, right, we think about how do we keep restrictions for every box, right? In every box, there is a restriction that it has to be majority element. You have to keep track how many, how many items of the first type have you put in the other boxes, right? And it's not really that easy to keep track in DP. So first we will try to, so you kind of gauge the difficulty in each of the thought, each of the lines that you have. And then most probably DP is a bit more difficult to think about. So let's first think about maths, right? That's how you go about like different paradigms. So let's try to see this problem from the lens of maths, right? How do we put things in a box so that it's a majority? Now here is the most interesting observation that you have to learn for majority elements, right? Let's say you have to put in, in a box and maintain that one is like the type one is a majority and rest others are like, is there, right? So let's say we model the process of putting the balls in the basket in a way that you first put a one for sure. Okay. And then for every other element you put, you also put a one inside it and pair it up and then put it inside the box, right? Because for every element that you're putting that is not one, you will have to insert one one to maintain the ma majority, right? So for every minus one that you are putting into the sum of the block, you have to add a plus one. That's the lens of thinking for every majority element in general. So always think it this way that whenever you are taking something which is not the majority element, you are actually negating one of the counts of the majority element, right? That is there. In fact, is there is this classical problem in interviews also, which is like finding majority element of an array in a single pass and all. So that is also, that also works in the same kind of a way that like some other element that is non majority right now is like a, is going to cancel out the effect of something that is that you're considering majority right now. So one is going to be as a major element over here. And then if you put a Y, you have to put a one over here. So what we do is like for other elements, we pair them up with ones because every time you put that element in any block, right? This is just any block. You have to put a one as well, right? So what we're going to do is like, let's say there is a one and then the other elements is a two, a three, so on, right? So out of this a one, we're going to pick out a a one, a two number of a ones, right? Color one and the other colors are over here. So a three and so on. So for every a two ball, we are going to pair it with one, one color, one numbered ball. Okay. So we are picking out these number of one numbered balls and the number of one numbered balls that would be left is summation, uh, two, two N AI, right? Something like this. So these many number of ones would be left. And then for every two color ball, you're having a paired up one color ball, three color ball paired up with one color ball. And now this is a very classical problem if you think about it, right? So these equal, equal elements can be distributed in any element. So if you think about just one color right now, let's try to see that you have a two balls, a two balls of color two. And for every color, every ball, you have a one ball as well, right? So it's, it's, it has been already paired up. So now what we need to do is like, there are a two balls and then there are like these K buckets, right? And then you have to distribute these a two balls in the buckets so that, uh, like the, all of them are distributed, right? K I like distinguishable buckets. And note that for every A2 color, you also have an indistinguishable A1 color attached to it. I mean, the one color attached to it. So every like, it's like one, two and one paired ball you're putting together in every block. So what we can think of is, uh, fine, this is going to be like the number of A's is going to be key buckets over here. So the number of variable is, so there is this simple bar and stick formula, which you use for these things. And it's going to be A2 plus K minus one, choose 
the number of buckets minus one k minus one right the number of variables minus one so this is the number of ways that is there to put these a2 colored balls right similarly for a3 colored ball it's an independent problem because the way you distributed a2 is independent of the number of ways you put a3 and they are kind of going to be like independent of each other so whatever we find the ways for a3 for each of that you're going to have a way to distribute a2 so it's going to be product of that so we're going to have a product of these multiplied for different ais and that's what is going to give you the value right so this is going to be over here and finally this is the product that is the ways to distribute these paired up items that we have over here right these paired up items these over here these over here is going to be distributed in this particular way but note that this is not just the final product because we have to make sure that we have like distributed these ones like these leftover ones as well right and when we have these list over ones, you have to distribute it in, in each block. And remember, the question said that every block has to be a majority altogether. Like it has to be complete majority. So at least one of the extra ones has to be there. So every, like if you think about the new problem, there are a1 minus summation, some a i balls, like from i equal to 2 to n, right? These many balls. And these has to be distributed into k blocks, k uh, bu buckets. And each of these are like only individual first ball, first numbered balls, right? So what we can do is we can put these things in like any of the blocks, but we have to ensure that at least one is there in every block because the other ones that we are putting is kind of negating the plus and minuses, right? It's balancing it out. So one majority element needs to be introduced so that it's complete majority, right? So what we can do is we can like distribute these variables. So it's like doing x1 plus x2 this is the bar and stick kind of formulation which is equal to this number let's say this is n so this i should not be saying this is n let's say this is x so this is equal to some capital x right so the number of ways to solve this is such that each variable is greater than or equal to one the number of ways for that is there is this formula which is x uh, which is x minus one choose k minus one right so this is let's say this is x and this is going to be x minus one choose k minus one so this is the ways to distribute the white the extra ones which is also independent choice so it's going to be a product of let's say a a1 minus summation of ai from 2 to n choose um, i'm just writing it in this note notation so note that like a choose b and this is obviously the same thing if you don't know about notations for these things and this is going to be equal to this minus choose k minus one and this is the n you have to have n minus one right so this is going to be if i just move it a bit this is going to be this minus one choose k minus one so this is the extra ones this is actually creating the majority and this is going to be the rest distributing the rest of the thing so that majority is not broken up and it's all independent so it's all just a product right now this is what we need to find out for this particular problem there is one last caveat in this problem is how do you calculate this up because AIs are pretty large, right? And AIs are like up to 10 to the power, like very large. It's 10 to the power nine ish. So it's not going to be possible to do these problems with just like saving the factorials and calculating n choose r. But there is this observation which tells us that, okay, k is pretty small. K is up to 200. So there are multiple ways in which we can calculate n choose r, but one of them is to calculate, like, let's think about this, how to calculate some AI plus k minus one choose k minus one let's say just focus on this term every term is very similar to this one right let's say we have to choose fa calculate this number right and this is going to be like this number is around 10 to the power 9 and this number is up to around 200 right this is the setup so how do we calculate these kind of a setup for n choose r's right so n choose r n is up to 10 to the power 9 a r is up to 200 so the way we can do this is we can also solve this problem in and which is modulo some prime number okay this is a prime number so we can solve this in order r if you want to right how because if you think if you understand the meaning it's going to be n factorial divided by n minus r factorial n minus r factorial into r factorial right now this term has a like this term has n terms this has n minus r terms this has r terms right this can be cancelled off with this factorial and there would be n minus r plus one number of terms left out right sorry n minus exactly r terms left out right n minus r plus one multiplied by n minus r plus two so on up till n right if you think about these terms it's going to be like 
from n count r n r downwards right and these are the first r terms multiplied so this is just the factorial first k terms factorial right so we can and r can always be up, up till 200 so we can calculate all factorials up to 200 and find its inverse right and this can be calculated for every n independently by just looping over the first k terms right the k terms of the factorial and then just multiply it with r inverse so what we'll do is we'll calculate this part n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 so on up till n minus r plus 1 right this is the multiplication part okay and then we need to divide it by r factorial so r factorial is pre-computed in order let's say k log k or order k in also you can do that and then this can be done in order r right or order uh, order k so in total we can solve this problem for every n choose r term even though the n is very hard any high we're gonna have a uh, order k k complexity so in total when we go back to this formula for all of these terms these numbers on the numerators are pretty large but still this denominators are k so all of these terms are gonna take uh, i equal to 2 to n all of these terms are gonna take k so in total we can calculate this in order n into k and if you think about the problems complexities uh the k and n was 10 to the power 5 and 200 which is fine for this particular problem right so that's almost the way in which you can solve this particular problem a very interesting way to think about majority elements right that how do you pair up the disturbing elements right and that's almost going to be there if we think about the formulation we have already talked about n choose r so what we can think of in terms of the formulate step is formulate is this number one what we can do like different things that we need to do is first we need to make sure that we take the input and all and then we need to calculate k like i factor one by i factorial for the range one to k because this needs to be pre-processed right like inverse of the I, sh I should write it this way i guess i factorial inverse right this needs to be calculated for the range this which can be very computed pretty easily and then secondly what we can do is we can use the formula and for each n choose k use a like order k method to calculate it out right so there are multiple ways in which you can calculate n choose k i have talked about this in one of my live streams on combinatorics you can check that out if you have not and if you want me to create a full video on the all the ways that are there for n choose k both including simpler and harder techniques like there are harder ones which require not which are non-prime modulo and then you have to use like crt or chinese remainder theorem to merge the solutions then you can kind of comment down below that okay that is something which is requested i can i can make that particular video i think okay but again this is again about this problem and this, then once you have the plug in plugged in the formula it should be just a order n into k solution for in total right so that's i guess all for this particular problem a very interesting one majority element is something that is asked not very often but still it's like one one of those thought processes that you need to know to solve these problems whenever it pops up right so it's a very cool way to think about majority elements make sure that you learn this up code this problem after this video and do continue up this ad coder series like on every tuesday thursday and saturday you have one video on the channel as promised and we're gonna continue this as long as you guys support us so do like the video and subscribe to the channel press the bell icon so that you don't miss out on these videos and do comment up what you learned that's very very important okay so that's all for this video see you in the next one Bye bye